Hey robot fans, in this video I'm going to show the head mechanism for my BB-8 build. A lot of questions that keep coming up on the forum and the Facebook group are how can I get the head as light as possible, how can I have enough magnetic pull to keep the head on, and how can I keep the motion of the head as smooth as possible. A lot of builders have come up with some great solutions. This is my solution. As you can see, the head moves side to side and front to back really well. Even as it drives, it moves very smoothly. I was also able to get the lights and sounds into the head all for the low, low price of two pounds and 14 ounces. So in this video, I'm gonna deconstruct the head piece by piece, show you all the parts that I created and all the parts I modified. I'll also provide the STLs and a material list so you could recreate this head mechanism if you'd like. So let's get started with that. Let's start with the parts that I didn't modify at all. The radar eye, the PSI, and the hollow lens are exactly as they were in the club files. The antenna that I'm using actually came from another builder. Matt Hobbs did a run of flexible antenna. These are great, they're super high detail, really light, and they take a bit of a beating for when your dome hits the floor. The first piece that I modified was the top of the dome. This used to be two pieces, the pie panels and the dome top. I combined those two, hollowed out the inside and split it down the middle so it could print side by side on the print bed. These can be printed with no supports and the lightest infill possible. I also added in a rim so that when you attach it back to the dome, it attaches with a push fit rather than the magnets. This gives it a little bit of side to side, to side stability. It takes a bit of a beating. You can turn it upside down. It doesn't budge. The next main parts that were modified were the dome and the skirt ring combo. I think these can be shown better in 3D Studio Max, so let's take a look at that. Okay, the dome on the outside is relatively untouched. I did most of my changes to the inside structure. When I downloaded these files, it was January of 2016. That's when I started building BB-8. And I was having trouble with my Dropbox, so I just downloaded all of those club files to my local server and have been using those. I know the club has made a lot of modifications to all of the files, but this is based off of the original January 2016 batch. Um, I deleted the inner rim here. It used to have holes to attach to the top of the dome ring. I think it's pretty widely accepted now that the dome spins above the ring, so those are unnecessary. I left a small brim so it can glide above the dome ring. I also added in this cross brace. This brace is what attaches to the main mechanism and also gives you a lot of mounting room for electronics and batteries. The next piece is the skirt ring combination. Again, in 2016, the skirt and the ring were two separate pieces and they did not have any of these vertical notches, which are seen on the movie droid. So what I did basically was just attach the two pieces together and hollow them out. The original ones were pretty chunky. I can actually show you those in real life. Um, I hollowed it out, added in the notches. If we look at a section of this piece, you can see it's relatively hollow. It just has enough enough thickness to support it and I really wanted to make sure that my inter internal wheels cleared this bottom ring which they do. So here's the whole piece, well actually this is half of it, but this can print in one piece upside down with no supports. I, I had no trouble printing it with no supports. The dome however does need to be printed with support just because of this cross brace. So if you have Simplify 3D or another slicer where you can modify the supports, the only place you need to put supports is underneath this cross brace. So like I mentioned earlier, this was the original skirt ring combo. It had this wider brim with the holes in it and the skirt was pretty chunky and I just hollowed that out and printed it light. This came in at about 12 ounces. I think it was 11 and 7 eighths and this is about five and a quarter ounces. So the weight difference is pretty significant and all we really did was just remove a lot of this mass that isn't necessary and only got in the way of the wheels. Sticking with the ring skirt piece, we could start to talk about the main head mechanism. This is an old test ring, but here you could see the main assembly that attaches to the dome ring, which will allow the dome to spin freely on top while this remains stationary. It consists of three legs and a central hub that contains a six millimeter bearing. Construction for this is very simple. The legs print out like this, push fit into the hub, and then that is ABS solvent welded together. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to insert your caster wheels. The casters are based on the James Bruton version three caster wheel. I just made them a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter. Here's one of my old Bruton style casters. The wheel is about 90% the size and it's printed in white semi-flex. It's important to use white because the black or any other color will leave scuff marks on your droid. I learned that one the hard way. 
Also, I was using steel in the Bruton version, four millimeter steel studding. I found a big problem with this was that the magnets attracted the axle and would get stuck on it and then cause the wheel not to rotate properly. So I switched those out for three millimeter brass. So the construction here is simple. It's the semi-flex tire, two ABS hubs, and then the main central caster hub and a brass axle that goes through and there's two additional three millimeter shoulder washers inside there. At the top, this brass gets inserted into the bottom of each of the arms, which also has a shoulder washer here. It slips into there like that. And then I printed out these little end caps, which are glued onto the top of there. And when that's glued, this will hold it in place enough for when you pick up your head that it doesn't fall off. With all three casters attached, you can place it on the body. It's nice smooth movement. The, as the wheels rotate, they eliminate any jump or skip. Next up, we'll be adding in the magnetic mount and let the body control the movement of the head. This is my body magnetic mount, which I'm affectionately calling the Bear Claw. It uses the same magnets recommended by the club for their setup. It has the two inch disc magnet and the one inch disc magnet. I actually used an extra one in addition to what the club recommended because I was very concerned about having enough pull for the head. However, when I put this in the body and I made the match for the head, I found that this many magnets was too much pull. So I had to reduce it quite a bit. I reduced it down to this, which just uses the two inch magnet and the center to one inch magnets. This has been perfect. It, and I even have this quite a bit away from the top of the droid and it's holding really well. I think I can explain the construction of this a little bit better in 3D Studio Max. So let's take a look there. Here you can see the dome magnetic mount paired with the bear claw inside the body. This ring right here represents the James Bruton cheese and the body panels. As you can see, the one inch magnets are closer to the body panels than the two inch magnet. This is the distance that's needed between the two inch magnets to have the wheels spin freely and have the head move very smoothly. Anything closer and the magnetic force is way too much. However, at this distance, the one inch magnets are pretty useless. So I bumped them down a little bit just so that they would properly pair with the body. And at this point, they're basically just being used to orient the dome magnetic mount to the bear claw and the two inch magnet is doing the bulk of the magnetic pairing. This is the way the dome magnetic mount looks when it comes off the print bed. There's two risers for the one inch magnets, a recess for the two inch magnet, and another recess for a nut and a screw. That screw is basically just an M6 bolt with a nut attached to it. The nut is screwed all the way to the top and that's what's gonna be used to anchor it into the dome magnetic mount. If we take a look at that part again, we have a the screw goes into that recess, then the magnets come on top, and the magnets are screwed into place with a 1 inch 1024 bolt. On the top, you can see that there's a 1024 nut securing each of the magnets, and there is another M6 nut placed on the back of the dome magnetic mount, and there is a washer placed over that. This washer is what will make contact with the bearing in the spindle and help it spin freely. Using these washers, you can really dial in the distance between the body panels and the magnetic mount. By adding more washers, you could bring the magnets closer to the body panels and have a stronger magnetic pull. On my setup, there are two washers in between the nut and the bearing, and that seems to work really well for my setup. When you figure out the proper number of washers, you insert the entire assembly through the bearing of the spindle. Then to secure it, there's an additional 3D printed spacer, which has an M6 lock nut embedded inside of it. This spacer spins all the way down the M6 bolt until it's touching the top of the bearing and the spindle. Okay, that gets us to this point where we have a free spinning magnet assembly. Next, we wanna add the last piece, which will attach to the dome. But before I do that, I just wanna mention the felt tape that I have on the top of the ring. This will help eliminate that annoying plastic scraping sound you hear the first time you rotate your dome. I inset it a little bit off of the edge so that it wouldn't be visible with the dome on top. It's also important to sand down the bottom brim of the dome with the highest grit sandpaper you could find. I also added a couple coats of lacquer on it just to get it as hard and smooth as possible so it glides really nicely along that felt. The last piece is this cradle piece which attaches to the dome crossbar. It screws into the top of the spacer using a half inch number four wood screw. So if I attach that. Okay, you can get a good idea of how it's gonna rotate here. Let's take a look at it on the droid. To place it on the dome, just hover it above and the magnets will orient themselves and place it down. 
Now you can see the rotation and you kind of get an idea of how that cradle is going to move the head. When it comes to placing the dome, I have an arrow put onto the cradle that points to the front of the dome just for consistency's sake. And from there, it's just a push fit. The cradle will hug the crossbar and that in addition to holding the dome secure will also give you a little bit of tolerance in the overall dome height, which is important. So if you look here, my dome is a little bit on the looser side. So when I turn it, it kicks back. So this isn't something that I necessarily want. So I can push down and give a little bit more tension on the cradle, which will give a little bit more friction on the felt tape. And then you get some smoother dome movement. And if that ends up being too much, you can dial it back. And you can really tighten in the head to whatever kind of strength you want with regard to how it stops or how smoothly it moves around. Okay, lastly, I just want to give you a quick overview of my electronic setup inside the dome. I have these two 3.7 volt light bulbs wired in series going into the Disco Droid module from Jim Harvey U. I also have the HC05 Bluetooth module talking to the Disco Droid from my remote control. And the outputs from the Disco Droid are a NeoPixel strip which lights all the logic lights and the HoloLens. An LED, a single white LED going to the PSI, and six red LEDs going to the radar eye. The sound comes from a TT25 transducer, which is really loud and really awesome. So let's take a look at all of this in the actual dome. Okay, looking in from the top of the droid, you can see I have the disco module mounted to the main crossbar right next to the hole there with two screws. I have the HCO5 Bluetooth module glued to the top of the disco droid unit. If we flip this over, you can see I have the TT25 transducer hot glued to the side wall just opposite the hollow lens area. I figure that was the best place to counter the weight. You could follow my NeoPixel string here. It goes to the side blue logic here. I have everything covered with uh, the same felt tape just to eliminate any light bleed. And then it goes over to the two side logics there. Next up, I actually have a backup PSI sitting in here attached to the NeoPixels. I couldn't get the coating to work with the sound right away, so I ended up putting in another one with a standard LED. But hopefully I'll be able to eliminate that whole string and just put this back inside there. And then the NeoPixels terminate at the HoloLens. Coming out of the radar eye, I have six red LEDs, which I'll be using for animation. And then the last thing I want to show you is my battery setup. So here's my battery setup. I have those same two little LiPos into this bracket that I made. They have a series wiring harness on the back here, which goes to a power switch. This wire then would go into the disco droid unit and this whole thing push fits onto the crossbar. It's a pretty snug fit. Um, this thing has fallen off a couple times and this thing hasn't gone anywhere. And that's pretty much it. This video has been pretty specific to my particular setup, but this should work for any magnetic setup so long as you can attach it to an M6 bolt. You might have to adjust the size of the spacers or add more or less washers, but it should work. Thanks for watching. Sorry I got so long-winded, but if you've made it this far, maybe consider subscribing to the channel for more BB-8 videos and my upcoming chopper project. There are links to all the products in this video in the description as well as links to my social media page, so check them out and I'll see you next time.